I, I want to ask some business questions, and I know from experience that when you get deeply into the details of business in this kind of a forum, sometimes folks' eyes glaze over. But I want to say to you that in no time in the history of television has business been more important, that every producer has to understand the business of television. That wasn't true 30 years ago because you had no part of the business. They were doing it. They owned it. You know, they, they, they did it, and they just paid you, and you did your thing. Those days are gone, and we need to understand all the modalities that are being developed now because that's where your opportunities are going to come from. So, for instance, let's talk about the idea of independent television and what that means. You're doing that. Mm -hmm. So talk about where's the money going to come from, where are you going to sell it. Talk about your model of what you're trying to create. Yeah, I mean, it's a really, for me, as someone who came from sort of traditional networks and studios and having been a producer and watching that old model, what was really exciting for me about looking at this new model is looking how we finance things and how we finance things for the long term. I mean, our company is really just pursuing uh, direct-to-series shows, which, believe it or not, there's actually a market for that now. I mean, I think we took account the other day that over the last three years, there have been some 50 shows across all mediums, all platforms, wow. broadcast, wow. cable. With no um, pilot with no pilot, wow. with the intention of going to straight to series. And I love that because there's an intentionality to it mm -hmm. in terms of like the buyer committing to actually working with the producers and you know the, the talent to make this thing a reality. So the question is then how do we finance that? Well, in many ways, for us, if that model is out there, it actually is helpful because we can go overseas and look at some of those co-partners, co-production uh, companies overseas, or studios overseas that are interested in having a piece of the pie. And we can start to build a model where there's a little bit of a domestic license fee, which you know hopefully can be reduced if you can, you know, one or two European or international partners to buy into it. Um, you know, with the uh, advent of second windows or the uh, tax credit situation. Talk about second windows, so people understand what that means. Well, it means that basically you can air a show um, on a streaming device after you sell it to a main platform initially. Okay. And uh, it could be up to four days. I think after the Dome airs on, is it Amazon, Amazon right? Amazon. Four days after CBS? Four days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's the way for, and I think that's great. For a producer, that means that Under the Dome isn't necessarily a CBS show or an Amazon show. It's an Under the Dome show. Mm -hmm. And you know what that brand is. And that brand for us, as a studio, we can then monetize globally. You know, because Under the Dome in Europe could be seen in their markets and in their streaming circles. So it's an interesting way of doing it. Now, are you going to get into formats? In other words, you could do an Under the Dome, a French version of Under the Dome and a German version. But in this case, you're going to sell this one show in these different territories. Yeah, initially, I mean, it's case by case. We're going to take a look at and try to be very... Um, you know, mindful. I mean, the great thing about being an indie, indie is that there are no rules. We have a blank sheet of paper by which to define what the rules are. So we're going to take each project on a case-by-case -case basis and see how they play. For the most part, I would love it if we could play the U.S. version in other countries. I mean, we're looking at, like I said earlier, I think we're looking at content that inherently have some kind of global quality to it. And, and what I mean by that is not necessarily the you know, the, the, the classic, I'm sure we've all heard this pitch, you guys, like the Interpol show with like a cop from each country. That's not <laughs> what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what is human and what is, you know, um, you know, relatable across all cultures. Pete, how many companies are trying to do this independently, would you say? Independently, if you, uh, Lionsgate and Sony, I consider independent, but they're, you know, they're massive companies doing incredibly well. Um, there are probably seven that are doing it now that are really have dedicated staff and providing overhead and getting shows on the air. And, you know, I'm seeing... Are they then owning the show? In other words, the network doesn't, have, oh, doesn't own a piece of that? No, every, every deal is different. Uh -huh. You know, if, if, if you have a, a really big property or great script that multiple networks want, mm -hmm. um, generally you'll, you could end up with just a licensing deal. But I, you know, but I always find if you're thinking kind of on the long run of it, you know, giving that broadcast network or cable network or premium channel, just giving them a piece of the show is really smart because then everybody's really invested in the win. I mean, you know, you, you, make, the, you make the decisions about not just how do I get a pilot shot or a show on the air or a series order, how do I keep it on the air so it becomes a library asset, which is really what everybody wants. And so... Um, in some deals, you can, you know, it'll just be a license deal, and 
you know, these, and these independent studios are offering slightly more back end than what the traditional studios are, and they need to. They need to in order to be competitive um, as, as really savvy and smart clients, producers, writers, and otherwise look at their choices, and there are so many choices right now. You know, the independent studios who are kind of new to the scene need to kind of give that extra, that extra um, um, bonus in the deals for them to feel like, okay, I'm, I'm but not... Wonder, but what is the back end now? Like, you know, like I wonder as a recipient, of, you know, how do you even define that sometimes? It, it, for you, like nothing. <laughs> but, but no, I mean, it We're used to be... taking it away. <laughs> No. It used to be so so much clearer when yeah. you, you know in the standard network model I, I, and yeah I think it's look if you it's getting it's actually to me it's getting clearer now how the profits are defined you know when you were talking about FinCEN right which I totally agree with FinCEN really changed the landscape I remember I remember when I first got promoted you know there was Carsey Warner and Whit yeah. Thomas and Aaron Spelling and it just went on and on and on. And then you just, I didn't realize it at the time, but you just saw them all kind of closing their doors, closing their doors. And then every great piece of talent that came out was getting a, what was called a pod deal. But that was, you were a pod under the big studio umbrella. And that, you know, a lot of you understand that, that was really a big shift. And so, but now what's happening is, you know, there was a, there's so many issues. The back end is comprised of, as you know, as once the costs are recouped, and the overhead and distribution fees are taken off the top, then this, what's left over is your back end and you get your percentage. And so, but now it's getting a lot cleaner actually, I would say, because you really, you know the deals. So the deals are, you have your license deal, you have your second window deal, you, you have your resale and um, home video that used to be um, a model that wasn't very beneficial for the creative side. As most of you know, it was only twenty yeah. percent of the home video revenues yeah. went into the back end, and that home video had you know it was such an such an incredible revenue stream, but now home video is less. Is relevant. that just DVD or does that also is that streaming and streaming all? now is a hundred percent into the back end. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and so, you know, if you go back historically where the home video model was created, I think it was like in the late seventies, yeah. mm -hmm. and the studios were Disaster. saying, "Wow, this is going to be really expensive for us to dub these." VHS and Betamax tape and send them to all the <laughs> and we believe them tower videos tower record store all over the country and then you know when the DVD hit the scene and then you had big conglomerates retail stores all they wanted was delivery to their one distribution center the, the model never changed it was still you know but now the DVD is not as relevant anymore streaming video is the most relevant thing but that's hundred percent in and what's really I think what's really hard about the back ends is you know, we don't have those huge, massive, right? Remember when CSI hit? The numbers on CSI were so crazy. And then you would, and that would be reselling. And, um, you know, you don't have as many of those massive wins. But also, uh, how do you monetize, like for Amazon or for Netflix, if you're streaming, if I'm watching, if, you're, if people are downloading it and streaming it and it's not really monetized, it just seems less. That's subscription. Well, no, yes. Well, what, uh, what ends up happening is they're getting their monetization from the subscription, right. but they're paying the studio a license fee just like everybody else pays a license so that's fee. That's part of that. So, so their license but fee comes in. we're paying a higher license fee than traditionally is, is paid because of the territories that yeah. we're taking off the table. I love doing business with Amazon. <laughs> is that what you were, is that what he was yeah. quoting? No. Yeah. No. So they're, they're putting in a license fee. Then you have your soft dollars, and, and this is such a thing as the tax credits, you know, all these amazing jobs that are leaving um, Los Angeles. I mean, I have a lot of director clients, and they, they're rarely at home anymore. Yeah. And, you know, it, it kind of breaks my heart a little bit. I mean, they really, every job is in Toronto or Atlanta or New Orleans or North Carolina, or, you know. And, um, and so that's, but that's, I guess, its own issue. So you, you're looking at three things for the, mo four things. It's domestic license fee, um, foreign sales, soft money, and then um, you can kind of put in categories, product integration deals, mm -hmm. second window streaming deals, which are lesser, but those things all really add up. 